Sports welcomes you inside Bank of America Stadium in Uptown Charlotte. Just a few moments ago, this building was shaking as the Carolina Panthers emerged from the tunnel here in Charlotte. They are ready to go as the Panthers are set to match up with Matt Ryan and the Atlanta Falcons. And now a throw on first down there, but it's incomplete. Intended for I know at times table. people think we use it too often, but you've got to be able to throw guys open. And when you read zone, you've got to stick it in there before your receiver gets to the next guy in the zone. Otherwise, you bring him into the play. And that's precisely what allowed that defense to disrupt the pass. So now they'll come up on second and 10, once again from the 28. Now this one to his tight end out on the right side. And he'll be out of bounds across the 30-yard line. He'll get only three there, so it leaves him with a third and seven ahead. That was an okay hook up there with his tight end, but unfortunately, they didn't get the kind of yards they had hoped for. That's going to bring up third down. A tough spot here on their opening drive. This is third and seven. From the shotgun, it's Bridgewater. Got his target, Samuel. And getting this just shy of midfield, they'll spot it at the 49. Give him 18, it's a Carolina first down. But that certainly has to feel good. It's not all the time that the play caller should get all the credit. Sometimes I think in the huddle, the quarterback just says, hey, who's going to make a play for me? I just need something right here. And the end result there, nice first down. Drive keeps moving. Now he's going to swing this one out to his running back. And just one yard here from the 49 to the 50. Not much there, only a yard. Brings up they forget about the run to set up the pass. They're just coming out throwing. Forget trying to set anything up. They feel like they have the advantage. They feel like they have the matchups, and they're just attacking right now. Yep, going to the air on the opening drive. They only got a yard out of that last completion, and that makes this second and nine. First carry for Mike Davis, the former Seahawk. And they'll work this down to the 40-yard line, tackled there. It's a first down on a gain of 10. Usually we see runs like this as the defense breaks down later in the game, but this guy is setting the tone early, running through all types of tackles and put the defense back on its heels. They show run with three tight ends here on first down. Davis. And he'll take this one down to the 36. Davis, the ball carrier. Foyasade Aluakon made the tackle there from his safety position. It's a pickup of Yeah, I don't know if it's exactly a win-win, but if you're on offense, you'll take that kind of a run, all right? It was kind of stacked up, found a little bit of yardage, and frankly, they're pretty close to staying on schedule on offense. The playbook is still open for the coordinator. And Bridgewater able to get this complete to Anderson. And that's going to be good for another first down as the tackle's made at the Falcons 18. That one good for a first down pickup of 18 yards. 18 yard ball. Catch there by Robbie Anderson. And we all know he's got the speed to get behind any defense. What I think is underrated about his game is his toughness and his belief in self. Robbie Anderson was an undrafted free agent who's turned into a big-time player in the NFL and now landing in Carolina, reunites him with his college coach, Matt Rule, when they were together at Temple. Well, that call makes sense because they've been throwing it well on this drive, and once again, they show passing formation, showing the shotgun, then they ran out of it. That's a nice play by them defensively, though, to hold it to a short game. And here he'll get it down to the seven. That play gets him six yards and sets them up with a first and goal. And this is just a little touch pass. They send the receiver in motion, just kind of tap it forward to him. Now, it doesn't turn into a huge play, but they do pick up a first down, a nice, consistent gain. So first and goal now from the seven-yard line. Out of the gun, Bridgewater. And down he goes. Pressure gets him back at the 14. Keanu Neal with a safety blitz for the sack. Well, that was point-counterpoint, wasn't it? They decided to throw for it on first and goal. Instead, the defense counters with pressure, and the defense wins, getting a big sack. It's second and goal, but now all the way back at the 14. From the gun, Bridgewater. 
And boy, that one drops incomplete, but if he was hit a fraction sooner, it may have been a fumble. It's been a good opening drive offensively thus far, but you know they don't want to waste it and settle for a field goal attempt after that incompletion. So this is a big play coming up here on third down. A big play forthcoming. Here's third and goal. Bridgewater. And time finally runs out. He can't get rid of the football, and he's taken down. In for the sack, Deion Jones. Charles, a little bit of feast or famine on this drive. They moved the ball okay, but they've been sacked twice now. And they've got to figure out how to plug that leak a little bit, right? Keep them away from the quarterback because when he's not being hit, as you mentioned, they're moving the ball well. And his kick is good. And the Panthers stay claim to a 3-0 lead. Able to move the ball on that drive. Yes, just three points, but four first downs were in there. Yeah, and you can look at it and feel pretty good about the whole thing and think, okay, this should continue throughout this ball game. On the flip side, if you're a defender, it's almost like whew, we only gave up three. They moved the ball on us pretty well. After the made field goal, here's Sly to kick this one away. Here's Powell on the return. And he's up past the 20 to the 22-yard line. But for the Atlanta Falcons, that first victory of the year continues to elude them. They fell to 0-5 with a loss against Carolina at home in Week 5. The first time they've been 0-5 since 97. And after the game, the big story, Charles, they do some house cleaning, letting go of head coach Dan Quinn and also their general manager, Thomas Dimitrov. So Quinn had been there since 2015. We know he took him to the Super Bowl, a game that they should have won. But now... Raheem Morris steps in as interim head coach. Well, he has experience. He was a head coach with the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Actually had a 10-win season there before losing his job. And he's coached both sides of the ball. You know, normally known as a defensive guy. That's where he made his bones. But he coached offense for a while in Atlanta as well. Actually coached Julio Jones in the receiver. 